Okay, so we'll start right here. Here's my laptop. You can see Audacity is recording what we're doing. Um, here's my PSP. Here's my Altoids tin, which serves as a really good case holds the UMDs for PSP games for UMB UMDs. It only holds three of them um, because there's kind of a, you can see it kind of goes in smaller circumference there. So you can cram a fourth one in there, but it's kind of a tight fit and it's kind of hard to get out. The coolest thing about it is, is that with the UMDs and the Altoids tin, there's like no rattle noise or anything. They fit like yeah, that's perfect. That's true. It they fit very really cool. well in there. Um, I'll put the lid on. There's no, I mean, they rattle a little bit, but I think that's actually the disc inside of the caddy. That's not, they're not rattling around in there getting beat up. So here's Luminous, which is currently my favorite PSP game. And I'll uh, talk a little bit more about that. There's Wipeout, which is kind of a futuristic racing game um, that I got because it had an internet browser in it. It's actually a really fun game. Um, and then here are the new games that I got. The first one I picked up was Twisted Metal Head On. I got this on Saturday night. Um, there's a, a sampler disc that came with the PSP that has a bunch of demo videos, and I looked at it, and it looked kind of fun. It's not really something I was fired up about, but one of the reasons I did get it, if you can look here on the back, um, all the PSP games will tell you, let me zoom in, and I hope this is readable, but you can tell it says there that um, it's Wi-Fi compatible for both ad hoc and infrastructure. So what that means is cool. ad hoc is if you have another PSP near you, within yeah. range, like 100 feet, you can play multiplayer peer -peer. with that person, peer-to-peer. -peer. And if infrastructure means you can use a wireless access point and play over the internet, basically. So I tried that out on Saturday night, and it was pretty fun. It was kind of a, an interesting experience using the game browser and you know setting up an account for myself. You basically right. just have to pick a username and password that's not already being used, and it says, this doesn't exist, you want me to create it? Yes. You sign in, and then they have four lobbies. They have east, west, north, and south. And there were far more people in the east lobby, and I don't know if that's just where people are geographically located. Huh. Uh, it didn't really make any sense, because this was about 11 o'clock on Saturday night. Which would have been really early in the morning. Which would have been really early there, and there were far more people in the east lobby than there were in the west lobby, where I was um, I'm on the west coast in Portland. So that was kind of interesting. Um, but it's a pretty fun game. Nothing really outstanding. If you like the Twisted Metal series, if you like driving around and blowing stuff up, then you'll probably now, like that game. Now, you were telling me that it's kind of like, um, oh, what was your analogy? You know, like Brian, <laughs> aha. Yeah. It was like Quake in Cars, not Quake. Yeah, it's like Unreal Tournament Unreal in Cars. Tournament in cars. Mm -hmm. So you drive around, you pick up weapons, um, and that's basically the gist of it. Yeah. So the other game, I had pre-ordered this, and it came yesterday, was delivered. This is Archer McLean's Mercury. And this game is basically similar to um, Marble Madness, if you've ever played that classic game. You can see here on the back, I'm showing the back of the package. This one also supports multiplayer over ad hoc or infrastructure, but the multiplayer is actually pretty weak from what I've read. I haven't tried it yet. Oh, yeah. But it's basically you get a, a, you know, a semi-transparent ghost of your opponent and you're racing oh, together and, racing. and whoever gets their first wins but there's no interaction with each other or anything like that. So Mercury is a pretty fun game that ramps up the difficulty level really fast. <laughs> so I'm going to hand the camera off to Brian actually if he can uh, if he can take this for a drive and I've got Mercury loaded up here and I'm going to try to turn around and do this so there's no glare on the screen. Can you see that okay without glare? Yeah. So you see I'm at the failed level screen, which you'll see an awful lot. There's a demo. Um, let me come back here to the lobby. The load times on the game are actually pretty disappointing. It takes about a minute and a half from the time you put in the cartridge to get to where you can actually select a level and start playing. For those of you who can't see my facial reactions, it's like, holy cow. Yeah, that's, 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 pretty, that's pretty irritating. So here's the, um, here, let me go back. So here, there are eight worlds that you can play. I think there are eight. Man, the graphics are cool. Yeah, the graphics are awesome. The the animation of the little... There's six worlds you can play. You have to beat the first tutorial level, which has... Um, there are three different game types, basically. There's speed, where you have to race through. There's um, tasks, where you have to accomplish certain tasks. I think I'll play this one, just to show it off, because I know I can finish this one. <laughs> um, where you have to open certain gates with certain colors and certain pressures and and things. And then there's uh, combination ones. 
So you have to finish the tutorial level before you can go on and play any of the other levels. And the tutorial levels are, are pretty basic um, until you get to the last one, which is insanely difficult. And so after I played it like 15 times in a row and <laughs> lost 15 times in a row because my Mercury all fell off the edge of this level, this platform suspended in midair, um, I, you know, I was looking forward to spending last night, spending the evening playing Mercury. Um, and I got frustrated after that and took out Mercury and played Luminous for about three and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you can be. <laughs> yeah. So um, here's kind of a, an intro level. This is kind of a combination level where you've got to go through and... I don't know why it's zoomed out so far. So you've got to use... You, you've got your ball of Mercury there. You can use a splitter to split it into two different balls. And now they're different colors. And then you have to mix them together to make yellow. So I split them into red and green, I mix them to make yellow, and then I touch the yellow switch and it opens the yellow gate. And then I have to come into this next cell and do the same thing. I split the yellow. There are these little spray paint stops where you can turn yourself a different color. So now I've got blue and green and I mix those into cyan. And then I hit the switch and I can go through the cyan gate. Oh, I've got eight seconds left. Dang, time ran out faster on that one. So now I turn it to purple. I did it with three seconds. Pretty cool. Do you know what's the graphics engine on this? Like, do you know what the hardware it's, is or anything? It's got a graphics processor that has um, two megs of dedicated memory. I don't know what the speed of it is. It's basically, from what I understand, it's got a MIPS processor, 333 megahertz. Um, hmm. It can scale up to 333 megahertz. And it's dual core. So one of the cores is used for you know, just processing AI sound type stuff, and the other one is the graphics core. Oh, cool. So without dwelling too much on this, um, but just to show off a little bit more of Mercury, let me go to the level that uh, I haven't finished yet, the tutorial <laughs> level. The, it, the one that will kill you. It's kind of bad when you give up in frustration because you can't beat the tutorial level. <laughs> okay, so here's the tutorial level that keeps giving me problems. And there's these conveyor belts, and you've got to control... The basic control mechanism is using the analog stick on the PSP, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, it gives you some pretty good sensitivity, and you're not controlling the little balls of mercury. You're tilting the level and yeah. making them roll. And if you lose too much mercury at any given point, then you're done. <laughs> so on this level, you have to use one color of mercury to hold the switch down while you get the other color of mercury through and then you have oh to merge them back together and then paint them yellow and then get onto the yellow switch and you're done. Oh my gosh. In a time? Is yeah, and it's time. timed. Yeah, you got 65 seconds? Yeah. Well, so far the time hasn't been the problem. The time hasn't been my issue. No. The issue has been that. <laughs> <laughs> because they get so close to the edge. You can, you can spin the camera around. Um, the controls on this are really pretty simple. I mean, all they, all you really have is the analog stick. So now I'm going to bring so them down you here. I'm going to get the red oh. one down here. And now that the red one's here, I can bring the green one onto the conveyor belt to go through this gate over here. And then once I get the green one over there where it's safe, I can bring the red one across. But I'm losing chunks of myself. I can... What? What's going on? Oh, I can't get through there. Are you too big? No, the gate oh, closed. The gate okay, closed. okay. Wait. What happened? <laughs> okay, this is farther than I've ever been. Okay, so I merged them into yellow. And now I'm going to come down here through this yellow gate. There are gates you can only pass through if you're a certain color. Yay, I finished! Hey, look at that. You might actually like, get past the... The intro stuff here. I finished the tutorial. Um, the other thing about the game is that it doesn't automatically save. Ah. Uh -uh. Yeah. I read this in a review, and luckily I read it before I was burned by it. <laughs> um, but you have to manually save your state in between um, in between levels. So anyway, that's Mercury. It's one of the newest. It's one of the only two puzzle games out for the PSP right now. Um, the other is Luminous, and. It's a pretty good game. I mean, the graphics on the Mercury are pretty cool. If you like puzzle games, you like something that is really challenging, I mean, you're going to try... There, Every level has a time limit, so you're going to be doing stuff over and over and over and over again <laughs> until you get it just right. 
<laughs> if you don't mind games like that, if you like games like that, then oh, a boss level? What the heck? Use the teleport to bypass the Mercoids because they will eat you. Sweet. <laughs> Reminder, rubbing against the wall slows you down when being chased. You have 1 minute 35 seconds and you need to save 50% Mercury. Complete this level to unlock the Quartz World. Can you do this in under 30 seconds and score 8,500 or more? We can. Well, it's nice when the developers taunt you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, so that's the teleporter that's sucking me up and shooting me somewhere, and I'm getting eaten. By the Mercoid. What the heck is a Mercoid? Where am I supposed to go? Is that another teleporter? Oh, no, oh, there's, a, there's a gate. I have to get through that gate. So that switch opens it. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Still a core so, device. I had no idea it was a dual core. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a dual core processor. So let me pop that out. I want to show... I talked a little bit last time about Luminous and about how it's kind of this weird synergy of music and, and uh, levels and the display and the skins and everything. So let me... Um, here's the UI of the PSP, by the way. This is their media crossbar, that they call it. So you come over here to the settings and you've got... Um, you know, here's your system settings. You can look at your battery status here. Um, I charged it up before I came, so the battery's still at four, for 100%. Yeah. Um, I've never had the battery run out on this. I've actually been pretty impressed with the battery life, which is something You've played it for hours on end. Yeah, right? I mean, well, I played it for about three and a half, four hours last night. <laughs> and, it, you know, it drained it down. I don't know what percentage. And was some of that but, time wireless then, playing the... Uh, no, I didn't do any wireless last night. Oh, okay. I After I got frustrated with uh, Mercury, I put in Luminous and... <laughs> Played Luminous for quite a long time. <laughs> um, is that still is that showing up okay on the screen? Yeah, it's okay. pretty good. I just didn't I, know if my hands were in the way or something. I think. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully this isn't too boring. Um, let us know if you like stuff like this. If you like video and audio, the option to get the video or just do the audio if you want. Um, if you like the game reviews that we're doing or not. Um, this is the latest gadget that we've been playing with that I've been playing with anyway. So. Um, so that's why you're getting this. Okay, so here's Luminous. You notice that Luminous loads pretty quick. I didn't. I preloaded Mercury because I didn't want to sit here for as long as it takes to load. It's really irritating. And you get this really ugly pseudo 3D. It's actually just this 2D sprite that sits and rotates, and it's an hourglass, and it's, it's really kind of dumb. Okay, so Luminous has different modes. You can play a versus the computer, where if you defeat the computer opponent, you unlock that skin. Um, so besides high score, you're really kind of motivated by um, unlocking new skins in this game. Now the purpose is, the, the way you unlock new skins is by getting blocks of four or more of the same color, and then they disappear. But they don't disappear until the timeline goes by. So you can see that going by. And you can hear the music's kind of rocking along with it. You can do combos which I don't have any set up here yet, but I will try to get some. I think the tunes are cool. The tunes are the best part of the game, I think. Um, it's awesome to just put in some headphones and play this, um, which is what I did last night. Um, headphones is another thing I want to talk about today, actually. <laughs> you I had headphone <laughs> nightmare. I have headphone issues, <laughs> earbud issues. I posted this on Tiny Screen Pulls last night, and I got a lot of really good feedback from people. Um... So if you can see, I'm going to set up some, some combos here. You can start doing stuff like like this, which really works to your advantage, um, where you're breaking the blocks apart rather than just keeping them intact and sending the parts to different places where they're going to be more useful, if that makes any sense. Um, this is where the video part comes in handy. Yeah, this is... <laughs> I think this game is beyond my gaming capacity. It's, it's actually, I think it's pretty straightforward to pick up. It took me a lot of practice, um, like I've said before, to unlearn my Tetris reflexes. Because it's kind of a combination. It's like this fusion of Tetris and Bejeweled. Wait, what's your yellow flashing tape thing? Are you running out of tape? Where the what? The, huh? There's a yellow icon. Oh, we might tape. actually be running out of tape. And if that's the case, then... Um, 
Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and stop the the recorder. Um, just the thumb button there. So we're. Gonna, I'm going to start at the video here, and on the just for those that are might only be watching the video, these are my Sony MDR EX71 headphones, and you can see there's something not right about them. So we're looking at about eight inches, six to eight inches of just bare copper wire, where this you know the rubber whatever housing on them have come off. So Josh is, keeps expecting to like be sitting in his cube listening to something and get electric. Shock. Yeah, I keep <laughs> waiting for these electric shocks. So let me get a nice shot of the Sony logo there, with the and you can see even where the the leads come together. There's this little plastic bead that kind of holds them up, and e even that's coming apart. So they're just completely falling apart. Yeah, it's kind of and weird. of course, there's only a 90-day warranty on them, and it's way past that. And I don't want to hassle with sending them back and everything. And they, they were only 30 bucks. So my dilemma is, what do I do for headphones? I'm spoiled with the comfort of these. <laughs> do I right. spend another 30 bucks and buy my third pair of these with not a lot of confidence that they're going to last a long time? Or by I mean, then you've spent $90. Do you go ahead and spend $90 and get yourself? Yeah. So I've gotten a lot of good feedback and comments. Um, when I was up in, in Seattle and had lunch with Robert Scoble, I um, I had a chance to try out his Edimotic mm -hmm. ER6 eyes. Okay. Um, those were really nice. And the same principle, you know, in the air, noise isolating, they sounded great. But they retail for 150 bucks. Right. Amazon's got them for 100 you know. And by now, I've spent that much on these Sonys, right. on a third pair. <laughs> um, I've gotten some good recommendations from people about Shure headphones. Um, they have a model, I think it's the E6Cs, that are really spendy. They're like 300 bucks, but they sound great. Um, but they have another model, the E2Cs, that go for, I've had a couple of people send me deal links for like 60 bucks. Oh, wow. Um, which isn't bad, and so I might look into those. But $300 on headphones. I know people spend that, but you know, for $300, I want yeah. season tickets to the... the yeah, so, Symphony too, you know, so right? I think we're going to run out of tape, so we're going to stop the video part of this and continue the discussion. So if you're watching this just on the video, make sure you get the uh, audio, the MP3 file of the podcast, so you can find out what happens. Because I actually have made a decision on this, and I acted on story. it. Yeah, yeah oh, for the rest of the story, yeah, that's what I'm going to let everybody in. So I'm going to stop the video now.